AVL tree. An AVL tree is a balanced binary search tree. Since it is a balanced tree, it will have minimum height. And since it has minimum height, the search operation will have minimum complexity. We have already seen this in the previous video. So how does the AVL tree stay balanced? Whenever an insertion or deletion operation is made on an AVL tree, it will check whether the tree is balanced. If the tree is balanced, it will return. If however an imbalance is detected, it will convert the imbalance into a balanced tree. How does this conversion take place? The AVL tree will restructure its nodes in such a way that the tree remains balanced. This restructuring of nodes to attain balance is called rotation. So let's see the kinds of imbalance that we can face in our AVL tree and how rotation tackles them. Let Y be the node at which imbalance occurs. Let Z be the parent of Y. Let X be that child of Y that causes the imbalance. With this assumption, let's look at the first case. The first case is Y is the site of imbalance. X is the child of Y that has caused the imbalance. Z is the parent of Y. Now each of these nodes can have their respective subtrees. Y is the site of imbalance. What does that mean? That means that Y has a height that is more than one unit apart from its sibling. So the sibling of Y is the tree T0. And the height difference between T0 and Y is more than 1. Now I am going to rotate this tree to the left such that the tree becomes balanced. So what am I performing? I am performing left rotation. If I rotate it to the left, I will get I will get a balanced tree like this. So why does this restructuring work? Let's assume that X had a height of H. Now the height of T1 would have been H minus 1 or H because the, there is no imbalance at this level. The first imbalance detected is at the level of Y. So T1 could have a height of H minus 1. Y has chosen X because the height of X is more than the height of T1. So what is the height of Y? The height of Y is H plus 1. Now let's come to T0. There is an imbalance between Y and T0. That means T0 is going to be 2 units less than the height of Y. 
So let's say that T naught has a height of h minus 1, which is 2 units less than the height of y, which is h plus 1. Now when we restructure these into a tree like this, the height of T naught is h minus 1, the height of T1 is h minus 1. So the height of z would automatically be 1 plus this, which is going to be h. We already know that the height of x is h. So we have resolved the imbalance and the height of y is going to be h plus 1. So this is the logic behind the rotation. A simple way to remember how any rotation works is that we are going to take the middle value and set that value as our root. Let's look at this example. We have z followed by y followed by x. Since this is a binary search tree, we are going to have z, y is going to be greater than z, x is going to be greater than y. What is the middle value between these three? y. So let me set y as my root. Now we know that y is greater than z. So we can put z as the left subtree of y. We know that x is going to be greater than y. So we can put x as the right subtree of y. So that's an easy way to remember how to do the rotation. Now it's important to note where the subtrees are going. Now we have a subtree t0 to the left of z that remains at the left of z. Now we have t1 which is going to be the left subtree of y. But the left subtree of y is now occupied by z. So where does t1 go? So t1 is currently a tree of elements that are greater than y but le greater than z but less than y. So it is the set of all elements between z and y. So similarly that has to be retained in our new tree. In this case we are saying that t1 is going to be all elements less than y but greater than z. So even in this tree t1 is going to remain in some position between z and y. Here t1 was between z and y. Here t1 is going to be between z and y. Similarly t2 was between y and x. Here t2 is, remains between y and x. t3 was at the right of x. t3 is at the right of x. This is how the left rotation works. Let me show this using an example. Let's say I have a tree like this. Let's look at the height of the tree. External nodes will have height 0. We have height of 3 as 1. This is 0. At this level there is no imbalance because the difference is only 1. Then we look at this level, there is an imbalance because the difference is height is 2. So what is the node at which the imbalance occurs? 2. So this is going to be our y. What is the parent of y? 1. So this is going to be z. What is the, which child of 2 has caused the imbalance? 2 has chosen this to add its height on to. So it's going to be 3. Now, according to my left rotation, how am I going to restructure this? I'm going to give y as my root. I'm going to give z as the left subchild. Then I'm going to give t0, which is going to be my external node. t1, which is going to be also an external then to the right of 2, I'm going to give x, which is going to be 3, t2, which is going to be external, and t3. So this is going to be my restructured tree. This was y, this was z, this was x. So external nodes are height 0, z is height 1, x is height 1, 
y is going to be height 2. So this tree is now balanced. So this is how left rotation works. This is just one of the cases or one of the structures in which this x, y, z can come. Let's look at the next case. So this is the second case in which x, y and z can appear with their respective subtrees. So the level at which the imbalance occurs is going to be the level of y. In other words, y is going to be 2 more than its sibling in height. So in this case, what must we do? We need to rotate the tree to the right. By rotating the tree to the right, we get a tree like this. In this way the tree becomes balanced. It is important to note that T1 was bef before between Y and Z. Even in this case T1 remains between Y and Z. The only difference is here the parent of T1 was Y, here the parent of T1 is Z. But the overall position in the tree remains the same between Y and Z. So let's look at this with an example. Let me consider a binary tree like this. Now I'm going to fill up the height values. At this stage, we are going to face an imbalance because the height of 2 is 2 and the height of its sibling, an external node, is 0. So 2 is going to be my y, 3 is going to be my z, 1 is going to be my x. So how am I going to rotate this? I am going to perform right rotation. So it's similar to this, I am going to change it to this. So I am going to have y as my root, x as my left subchild, t1 which is an external node, t3, then I have z which is 3, then I have t1 and t0. Even in this case, you can see that the middle value is going to become the root. That's an easy way to remember rotations. As you can see, in this case, the height will be balanced. There is no imbalance here and our height of the tree is going to be 2. So this is how right rotation is going to work in an AVL tree. In further videos, we will see something called double rotation, which has to be applied to another case in which x, y and z can appear.